Hello, hello. So, hi guys, I'm Enrico. I'm a tech lead at Summa, which is a project inside PSC. And today, as Jay introduced it, I'm going to speak about how ZK and FHE work together. Or we can say why FHE requires uh, ZK to work. Uh, how does it work? Okay. So we start with like an application problem and we see like progressively why we need ZK. So the problem is pretty simple. Like we have an actor, Alice, that is querying a, a credit score from a data provider. The data provider is storing like username and credit scores. And what usually works is that the query contains the username and the data provider will return uh, the credit score. In this scenario, the database, of course, is private, so Alice doesn't have access to the whole database. And together with the query, the data provider will probably need some sort of authentication from Alice. But like the problem we see here is that, well, like the data provider must know that the, the, the query is coming from Alice. So they might do, I don't know, some hypothesis of why Alice is querying the credit score. So anyway, there's like some bit of information about Alice that gets revealed to the data provider that ideally, in an ideal world, we want to hide. So our goal is basically to kind of blur this, the object of the query and still be able to complete the old flow. So we're gonna go through, uh, let's say, the first effort, like the first effort of solution. Every time we need to blur something, we use encryption. So this is kind of the ideal encryption algorith algorithm that we want to use. So Alice will be able to encrypt this username using a, an ephemeral public key, generate a ciphertext, put this ciphertext as the object of the query, pass it to the data provider, that for now will just do some magic, let's say, return a ciphertext prime that when decrypted by Alice using her secret key will return her actual uh, credit score. So I said magic because most of the time that you think about encryption algorithm, you are not actually able to perform computation on this encrypted data. So that's why it might kind of seem a bit weird for you. So, but as you know, the solution for this is actually FHE. So FHE, the definition of FHE is that you can perform computation on encrypted data. It basically means performing addition and multiplication and starting from this primitive, you can kind of compute uh, arbitrary programs on encrypted data. So you know, like the solution is FHE. Going a bit more into the detail of what is like the FHE operation performed by the data provider, we'll see that like on the left, it will receive like this ciphertext. It will compare it to the username that are stored in the database. But the, the cool thing here is that this is not like a equal operation as you are used to have because on the left you have some ciphertext. So it's actually a FHE encrypted is, is equal operation that will return a vector of encrypted bits zero or one. And you can tell, like maybe the first thing that you will think is like, okay, but it's kind of easy to see what is the one and what is the zero. But actually for the way FHE work is kind of the encryption is indistinguishable. So, I mean, even the encrypted zero will look different from the eye of the data provider. So there's no difference from the point of view of the data provider between encryption one, zero, and all the other zero. What the data provider is gonna do next is do a sort of like a dot product between a vector of all the credit scores. And the result of this will basically be the encryption of the credit score of Alice because all the other credit score will, when multiplied by encrypted zero, will go to zero. And again, this is a fully homomorphic multiplication, not a traditional multiplication. Uh, yes, so this ciphertext prime will be sent back to Alice, which will be able to decrypt and uh, get back her credit score. And again, from the point of view of the data provider, no information is it me? Test, test. No information. Mm. 
think it doesn't work. It works, yes. <laughs> so then Alice, you know, will be able to decrypt using her secret key and fetch their 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 uh, credit score. Okay. <laughs> so there's another problem here actually. And the problem comes from the fact that as we added FHE, now the data provider doesn't know who's performing the query. So potentially, like everyone can just encrypt any username and get the corresponding credit score. So we kind of need to enforce some sort of uh, rule on the one that is performing the query. That like the data provider must be sure that they have the permission to access this credit score. So the first solution that we might think of is adding a set membership proof together with the query. So this can be like, I don't know, like a semaphore set membership proof that is proving that the query is, from, is coming from someone in this list of usernames. I mean, this is good because it restricts the, um, the person performing the query within this list of usernames. But there's another problem. I mean, like now Carl can generate a valid set membership proof and still encrypt Alice in the cybertex. So this is something that we don't want to, to allow. So this is the second solution and the actual definitive solution. The, we kind of modify the ZKP differently. So now, together with the query, the, the, let's say the person performing the query will send the ZKP of being Alice and the cybertext is actually equal to the encryption of Alice and some public key. So as this is zero knowledge proof, the data provider will not be able to tell what's the username, but it will be able to authenticate the, the one performing the query. So going a, a bit more into the detail of the proof, the prover is saying, is proving that they are the username, so this can happen using a digital signature, that the encryption is perform, performed correctly on some plain text, and this is the most important part, that the plain text is matching the username. Okay, so say that we decided to build this, and especially we decide to focus on this part in blue. So proving inside the ZK SNART that the encryption is performed correctly under some FHE algorithm. So what we build is a gadget that allows you to prove the correct FHE encryption using a, speci a specific algorithm that is called BFV scheme. So the way we see that is like what we build is what you see on the left the circuit that allows you to prove the correct encryption. But for apps, as you see now, you need to kind of plug it into other, other ZK proof, other gadgets that are proving some attribute on the plain text. So for example, like using as example the uh, voting FHE app, you cannot just encrypt something. Like the, the object of the encryption must be for example a one or zero, or you want to put like some requirements on the voter. So you can kind of compose together different gadgets and generate a ZK proof that is what you need inside your app. More about the gadget. It was built using elo 2 lib which is a library built by Axiom on top of Vanilla elo 2 And uh, like uh, FHE encryption, basically, BFV specifically, rely heavily on uh, polynomial multiplication as it is light, um, um, lattice-based cryptography. So we basically need to find a solution to make it efficient, especially the polynomial multiplication operation. We started by, by a naive approach that is just like doing it like with direct method multiplying coefficients. And this has O and M complexity, where N is the degree of polynomial one and M degree of polynomial two. And this is okay when you're working with like low degree polynomials. But actually, we work with polynomials of degree like more than a thousand. So what we, like the next strategy that we use to polynomial multiplication is basically to perform the actual multiplication outside of the circuit. We pass the resulting polynomial to the circuit and then inside the circuit, we evaluate them at some random value gamma and we enforce the equality. F of gamma multiplied by G of gamma minus H of gamma 
is equal to zero. And this reduces the complexity to O n plus m, which is good. And how we did that? We leveraged something called LO2 Challenge API that allows you to split the witness in two phases. So you cannot, in the first phase, you just commit to the polynomials coefficients. Then you, you extract a commitment from this phase. You hash this, and what you get in return is a value gamma that you can then use to evaluate those polynomials in phase two. So we kind of compute the polynomial outside of the circuit, and inside of the circuit, we only enforce the quality when they are evaluated at this value gamma. So some benchmark. I think this is really important because many people think that we are like speaking about like crazy, you know, time and takes a lot. But actually, we use this. Well, like this is like some standard uh, parameters that you use for FHE, and uh, specifically, we we are working with uh, a prime from the for the um, ciphertext field, which is two to the twenty-nine and the degrees of the polynomials are 1,024, targeting a security level of 128 bits. So the first approach, naive polynomial multiplication, was 35 million advice cell, but actually we reduce it to the half, kind of, and now the prover time is 60 seconds, so one minute on my laptop, which I think is reasonable for high stakes up. So what's the conclusion? Like. The conclusion is that every time you want to create an FHE-based app, you will need ZK, and that's basically needed to enforce rule, enforce requirement, enforce authentication mechanism on the plain text being encrypted. So that's like the main takeaway of the presentation. What we're gonna go from here, also, I mean, on a personal level and for anyone that wants to contribute, I think that it's important on the application side to abstract this kind of example to build maybe some more creative application, some, some kind of less boring application than credit score and building this. And on the infrastructure level, there's still a lot of room to improve the, the library that I built. The, um, adding also ZK, that would be like a cool test to see ZK on the homomorphic operation itself, so not only on the encryption side. And lastly, work on also another FHE algorithm. So BFE is just one of the many algorithms available, and it would be interesting to see how they fit into the logic of SNARKs, and maybe we found that there are like some more friendly algorithms when paired with SNARKs. So this is the library that I was referring to, and uh, as you see, it says built with Yuriko, that is actually gonna speak next, uh, more about like the technical part of this encryption scheme. Thank you. So nice talk, uh, are there any questions? Okay, there's one. Uh, hi. Um, I saw that you choose the uh, FH standard as dimension of uh, 1,000, uh, about 1,000, and the module is some kind of uh, 30 bits. So uh, what about the capability of this homomorphic encryption? Uh, as, as, as far as I know, you may can support one multiplication, right? It's mine. No. Yeah, 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 like the, yeah, the, bi the biggest problem is that the, the prime that you're operating with in this polynomial multiplication or all the operation is different from the prime of the circuit. So an idea that actually Jay proposed the other day is like to kind of try to fit, to find some, some Q prime that has some kind of uh, friendly property within the prime of the, of the circuit. So you, you don't need to do like non-native field uh, operation, but in another way, this also kind of restrict you to use only that prime. So it would be less flexible, but potentially more efficient as a performing the operation inside the circuit. So suppose if you need some kind of a small time resources to uh, speed up the two iteration. 
Yeah, that's what, uh, what I think it will happen. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you. Are there any more questions? That's it. Thank you, guys. Round of applause, please.